Okay, so meet the stars of the show. The show is the nervous system, and the, the players are the neurons, the glia, and a group of cells called progenitor cells. And we're going to talk about each of these in turn. We're going to start with neurons. All three types, the neurons, the glia, glia is the same as glial cells, and the progenitor cells all derive from what's called neuroectoderm. This is very early on in, the, uh, in gestation. There's a embryo that is a blastocyst, and, a, and the dorsal part of it becomes uh, specialized as a neural plate. And it's these cells that comprise the neuroectoderm that are going to form both the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So neurons, glia, and progenitor cells all derive from uh, neuroectoderm, with one exception that we'll look at. Uh, but what, what distinguishes neurons? What makes them different from other cells? Well, they're really spectacular looking. On the left here, we have a Purkinje cell. This is a cell that sits in the cerebellum. This is from um, a mouse. And this is a pyramidal cell that sits in the cerebral cortex. It is a tattoo of a drawing by Ramoni Cajal. Now, Ramoni Cajal was the, uh, was the greatest neuroanatomist of all time. He really started uh, the field of, of at least, uh, well, he started the field of neuroanatomy. So what you see by looking at these two cells, and there are many, many other different types of cells, is that neurons aren't just simple cells. They have lots of parts to them, and these parts have names. So one of the distinguishing characteristics about neurons is that they have these, distinguished, uh, these distinguishing parts. So the parts are, they have a soma, which is also known as a cell body, they have dendrites, and they have something called an axon. So there's an axon, there are dendrites that are next to the soma. The axon can be very long, we'll talk about that. And the axon has one of a, it has on it what are called synaptic terminals. And synaptic terminals can come in a variety of morphologies. Actually, all of these parts of the neuron can come in a variety of, of morphologies. Um, but the synaptic terminal is a very important place. It is where communication takes place between one cell and another cell. And in a classic synapse, what you have is a presynaptic terminal, a, an actual separation, and then a postsynaptic typically element, which is typically a dendrite. So information is typically going from the axon to the dendrites. And we'll come back to that in one moment. Now, when you look at the nervous system, you see this mass. And uh, in, in the late 1800s, uh, there was a idea that the rest of the body, the body was composed of, of cells. This, is, this was known since the late 1700s. Um, but that the nervous system was actually a syncytium. There were no distinct cells. And the person who upended that incorrect idea was Ramoni Cajal, who's shown here. Ramoni Cajal used a technique invented by Camille Golgi to intuit that neurons in the central nervous system and in the peripheral nervous system are distinct entities, that one neuron is distinct from another neuron. And what's amazing about this is that he used a light microscope, the light microscope that was um, available to him in the late 19th century. And with that light microscope, he could not actually see a, uh, a distinction between one cell and another. He saw it in his mind. He intuited it. He was such a, a gifted anatomist, and he worked so hard at it that he realized that these were two different cells. He and Camille Golgi, who had developed the stain that allowed him to, to see this, um, both won the Nobel Prize. When they went to give their lectures, Camille Golgi, who, who really didn't get it, 
argued that the nervous system was a syncytium. He was wrong. Um, and uh, Ramon and Cajal argued that, it, uh, that neurons were distinct cells. Not only did Ramon and Cajal realize something that was not literally available to him, but he, he realized another thing beyond the, that neurons are separate cells. He realized that, in fact, uh, that information was going in one direction. And this is called the law of dynamic polarization. And what you see here are, these are original Ramon and Cajal drawings, and he's got arrows. And the arrows are talking about the information flow. And you can take, for example, look over here. Here are the dendrites. Here's the cell body. You can see he has an arrow that's going from the dendrites through the cell body and then down the axon. Here, here are the dendrites of this cell. Information's going up here, across, over to this dendrite, and then down. So this is the law of dynamic polarization. Again, amazing that using um, a static view through a 19th century light microscope, Ramon and Cajal was able to come to this correct conclusion. What is the, the, what's the upshot of having neurons being separate entities? As we'll see later, axons can be very long. You can make a two-meter axon. You could make a, a, an axon that goes from your toe all the way up to, to your brain. So we don't need to make these, we don't need to have steps in between um, from a engineering perspective. We need them because they give us flexibility. And that is something that was uh, appreciated and popularized by Charles Sherrington, who also won the Nobel Prize. And what he saw, he looked at the synapse, not from a, an anatomical point of view, but from a, uh, but from a, um, a physiological point of view. Now, this is an electron microscope uh, electron micrograph of a synapse. What I'm, I'm going to sh first show you what we're looking at. So we're looking here at a dendritic spine. If you look at a dendrite, you'll see some in some cells, such as the Purkinje cell that we saw earlier, uh, that there are these little protrusions of a neck with a head on it. And these are called dendritic spines. And what you see here is an electron micrograph of one such spine. Here's the parent dendrite. Here's the neck. And here's the head of the spine. And what you see decorating the, all the way around the spine are these synaptic terminals. This is a synaptic terminal. This is a synaptic terminal. Another one, another one, another one. All these asterisks are synaptic terminals. They have little vesicles, these little round dots that contain neurotransmitter. And they're going to send that neurotransmitter from the synaptic terminal over to the dendrite. That's the law of dynamic polarization. But what Sherrington, what Sherrington informed us of was that these synapses were so crucial to the nervous system's function because at a synapse, you can integrate multiple opinions. This cell could be saying, go, go, go. This cell could be saying, stop, stop, stop. This cell could be saying, go very slowly. This should go really rapidly. But you get all these opinions, and this cell can then sum that up and decide what to do. It gives you flexibility. In one instance, you may go, and in another instance, you may stop. So this is the, um, this is the basics of neurons. We can recount the uh, characteristics of neurons. They are that they are derived from neuroectoderm. They have, in general, uh, many uh, specialized parts, but it is important to remember that not all neurons have each of these parts. They all have a cell body, um, and they all have a synaptic terminal. They don't all have an axon, and a very few of them don't have dendrites. Uh, they all uh, are terminally dif differentiated. They are not going to divide again, and they all contact another neuron. So on one end or the both. But there are other cells that also fit many of these characteristics. 
Um, and what you see about neurons is that instead of being um, hom a homogenous group, such as, say, kidney cells or lung cells, where there are maybe three, four, five different cell types max, what you have in, in the nervous system is this incredible uh, number of individualities this, uh, that instead of having five, a dozen, even two dozen types of cells, there are hundreds or even thousands of different types of cells, depending on whether you're a lumper or a splitter. But there are many, many, at least hundreds and probably thousands of different types of, of different types of neurons in the central nervous system. So now we're going to move on to glia.